70s, I used to frequent this beautiful neighborhood on a regular basis. You see, back then in the 70s, I was a part of the D.C. Black Preparatory Company, the first black theater company in Washington, D.C. in decades. And two of my best friends, who happened to be members of the company, also lived in this house. Ed lived upstairs and Jay lived down in the bottom. And we had so many wonderful, wonderful memories of being in this house. You see, back then, I didn't know that this was Lee Joy Park, nor did this beautiful area have its historic landmark designation. Six years ago, I was fortunate enough to move into this wonderful neighborhood. And after a few weeks of passing this sign on a regular basis, one day I stopped, I read it, it stimulated my curiosity, and then I did some research. And this is what I discovered. The Joint Committee on Landmarks has designated the Lee Droid Park Historic District in Northwest Washington, D.C., a Category 2 landmark of importance, which contributes significantly to the cultural heritage and the visual beauty of the District of Columbia. Created as a subdivision in 1873, Leedroy Park represents an important aspect in the development of Washington for several reasons. It is an early example of a planned, architecturally unified subdivision designed by one architect, James H. McGill and was designed to become an exclusive, affluent subdivision. The houses were designed in the style of Italian villas, Gothic cottages, and many styles in between. Leedroid Park was developed by Amzi Barber, one of the founders of Howard University. Leedroid Park presently contains 50 of the original 64 McGill houses, the remaining brick, frame, and row houses were constructed in the 1880s and 1890s. This change in the type of development from large detached houses to higher density row houses corresponds to the exodus of whites from and the movement of blacks into the area. Leedroy Park has much of the same style, architecture, and character it had at the turn of the century. There is one block left in Leedroy Park, which includes all original McGill houses and no intrusions. This is the 400 block of U Street. Another block which contains several very handsome McGill houses is the 500 block of T Street. Leedroid Park was developed as an exclusively white residential area, and this policy was enforced to the extent that a fence or wall enclosed the area and guards were stationed at the gates to restrict access. The fence which surrounded Leedroid Park became a focal point of unrest between the white inhabitants inside and the blacks who were kept out. After legal attempts to have the fence removed failed in July 1888, black students from Howard University tore the fence down. In 1893, Octavius Williams, a barber at the Capitol, became perhaps the first black to move into the subdivision. Lee Droid Park area was, however, integrated only a short time, and by the beginning of the First World War, the white families had moved out, and the area was almost totally black, making Lee Joy Park the home of many professional, influential black Americans. Among the prominent blacks who moved in and have lived in Lee Joy Park were Judge Robert Terrell, 
and his wife, Murray Church Terrell. Judge Terrell graduated from Harvard University in 1889. He then graduated from Howard University Law School in 1898. Shortly thereafter, he was commissioned by President William Taft to be the first black judge to sit on the municipal court in Washington, D.C. Today, Rosa Parks is widely known as the mother of the civil rights movement for her bold stance in refusing to give up her seat on the bus. But Murray Church Terrell was knocking down the doors of segregation and fighting racism and discrimination as early as 1950 six years before Miss Park's historic actions. This house, located on T Street, was the home of Robert H. and Murray Church Terrell. Miss Terrell, who at the incredible age of 86, led the successful fight to integrate all eating places in Washington, D.C. Local integration laws dating back to 1872-73 had disappeared in the 1890s when the district code was written. The laws had required all eating places and the proprietors to serve any respectable, well-educated person, regardless of color, or race or face a $100 fine and forfeiture of their license. Terrell launched a campaign to reinstate these anti-discrimination laws. On February 8, 1950, she and several of her colleagues entered segregated Thompson's restaurant. When they were refused service, they promptly filed a lawsuit. In the three years pending a decision in District of Columbia versus John R. Thompson Company, Terrell targeted other restaurants, this time using tactics such as boycotting, picketing, and sit-ins. Finally, in 1953, the court ruled that segregation in eating places was unconstitutional. Another influential resident of Lee Joy Park was author, educator, Anna J. Cooper. Miss Cooper was one of the most prominent African-American scholars in United States history. Upon receiving her PhD in history from the University of Paris, Sorbonne in 1924, she became the fourth African-American woman to receive a doctoral degree. She and Dr. Jesse Lawson, both prominent educators, founded the Freeland Housing University at 201 T Street to educate working blacks who were unable to attend school in the day. This building at 2nd and T Street served as her home as well as the university she created. On pages 26, and 27 of every new American passport contains the following quote, the cause of freedom is not the cause of a race or sect, a party or class. It is the cause of humankind, the very birthright of humanity. Anna J. Cooper. In 2009, the U.S. Post Office released a commemorative stamp in her honor. And this beautiful circular park located at 3rd and T Streets also bears her name, Anna J. Cooper Circle. Also located on T Street is the home of D.C.'s first appointed and first elected black mayor of Washington, D.C., Mayor Walter E. Washington. Between 1967 and 1974, Walter E. Washington had been appointed mayor commissioner by Presidents Lyndon Johnson and Richard Nixon, 
Soon after his initial appointment by President Johnson, Washington was faced with the riots in D.C. that followed the assassination of Dr. Martin Luther King. Although he was urged by FBI Director J. Edgar Hoover to shoot the rioters, he refused. He later told the Washington Post, I walked by myself through the city and urged the angry young people to go home. I asked them to help the people that had been burned out. You think, sir, that uh, large-scale violence is possible across this country and perhaps even probable? Well, I don't want to predict. I just think that we've all got to plan, prepare, not overreact, remain as calm and cool as we can and see if we can't make reason out of this because nonviolence was what uh, Dr. King stood for. Washington left office in January 1979 after being defeated by Marion Barry. Despite the loss to Barry and the criticism he received, the city had posted a $40 million budget surplus by his last day in office. Do it with courage and determination. I am somebody. The Reverend Jesse Jackson. One of our early civil rights leaders, when he joined Martin Luther King in 1965, founded in Chicago Operation Push. In his presidential campaigns, he also created the Rainbow Coalition. The Reverend Jesse Jackson also made his home here in Lejoy Park. In the course of time, other prominent blacks made Lee Joy Park their home, including Paul Lawrence Dunbar, first African-American poet laureate, Duke Ellington, legendary jazz great, Benjamin O. Davis Sr., first African-American general, father of Benjamin O. Davis Jr., commander of the World War II Tuskegee Airmen, Dr. Ralph Bunch, first American to receive the Nobel Peace Prize for his mediation in Palestine. Edward Brooke, first African American to win a Senate seat by popular vote, and C. Fleetwood, Civil War hero. Le Droit Park has become a very popular place for, for redevelopment. Uh, a lot of people, not only the people who live here, but people who live elsewhere have recognized what a nice place it is to live. And likewise, a lot of developers have attracted, have been attracted to that too. David Corey shares his experiences and why he began shooting pictures in Lejoit Park. Well, there was a very interesting article that was written in the Washington Post about Logan Circle. And it was talking about how the suburbanites were so busy running into the city that they never looked up and saw the magnificent buildings that they were passing. So I applied that to Ledroy Park and started taking the, build, uh, the pictures of the building here, which I think are ma magnificent structures. The challenges facing the community now are different than they've been in the past. We've had uh, a change in demographics. So the challenge now is to be and assimilate all these different people into one. I think it won't be too difficult of a challenge, but it will be a challenge. I think it, the history should be told because each generation should be made aware of who we are, lest we forget who we are. And that is important that we, we document it over and over again so that it is never forgotten. ANC Commissioner explains why she moved in Lejoid Park. I moved into Lejoid Park because of its rich history and, and I was uh, astounded about the history of the LaDroit Park. When I was a student at Howard University, I had no idea of the many luminaries who uh, were born and worked and lived here. Although the attempt to make LeDroid Park an integrated community failed in the early 1900s, today it's a vibrant, thriving, fully integrated community represented by many groups of people living side by side, in harmony and in ways that the original planners could never have imagined. Because of the respect and care that was given to the community by the professional, prominent, 
influential and ordinary African Americans who made Lee Droid Park their home, this community has become a designated historic district. In spite of the many challenges of the past and the challenges it faces today, the Lee Droid Park community has survived and will continue to survive while becoming a historic American treasure. Looking at this home on a regular basis was the inspiration for the story. Join us in the restoration of this historic landmark by going to the Terrell Restoration Project at PreservingLeeJoyPark.com.